It's been a contentious G7, mostly because of that trade tension between the French government and the United States of America. But the one thing you agree on is that Libra could be a problem. Why are you so concerned about a cryptocurrency? First, I wouldn't say this is a contentious G7 because the, the climate between uh, all uh, partners are is really fine, uh, not only due to the venue, but also uh, <laughs> the climate between us. And I see no such contention. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, you know, France, the EU uh, and the US, we are allies, we are friends. And considering each other as, I don't know, enemies, I've read that once, makes absolutely no yeah. sense. So we are really trying to bridge the gap and to find solutions to what could uh, create a breach between us. And I'm confident that this will be the case. Yesterday we had, a, uh, as you said, a discussion on Libra. And there was a unanimous uh, point of view is that this uh, raises major concerns and that it's certainly not ready uh, to happen. Why so? Uh, first uh, uh, concern is, I would say, just like uh, uh, anti-money laundering, uh, encouraging corruption uh, and whatsoever, uh, the second uh, concern is about, uh, well, what digital economy raises. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, uh, cyber security, uh, protection of that. And this really has to be addressed too. And the third one is that we also have macroeconomic concerns. Uh, if the Libra would fully succeed, and let's not forget that Facebook has two billion people uh, who are liking or uh, consulting, uh, uh, then it could destabilize uh, the, the monetary policy. Uh, it could go to some weakness in monetary policy. Uh, it could create a competition with uh, other currencies. And this uh, is something that needs to be regulated. And that, that appears to be the issue. That we, we really do think it could be an existential threat when it comes to the euro, when it comes to the dollar. Some will tell you that's hard to believe. This is a social media platform. Let's say uh, there is a matter of sovereignty there. Uh, and I, I'm not saying that it's going to be direct competitors to uh, other big currencies such as the euro and the dollar, but this must not be and cannot be neglected. You know how it starts, you don't know how it ends. And this is why really uh, yesterday the, the discussion was really unanimous. Everybody uh, expressed concerns. There was not a single minister uh, or representative from an international institution saying this is nothing, we should go on like that. Uh, there are opportunities, maybe, but this needs to be regulated and firmly regulated. And that's why the Commission is working on it, uh, how to characterize uh, the Libra in our legislation. Uh, and, and, and there is a, a final, I wouldn't say decision, but a point of view from the G7 is that we need to coordinate on that to be really concerned and, and, and if necessary, to enter into collective action. Uh, I wouldn't say versus Libra, but on Libra. And when you talk about collective action, we know there's no collective action on the digital tax. The Americans are serious about the 301. The French say, well, we're going to go ahead unless we get a G7 agreement at the very least. Are we going to get any progress on that today? I, I think so. Uh, the, 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 the meeting is, is not ended. Uh, but um, I, I saw, I would say, a positive spirit yesterday. It was not, okay. again, about contentious. Uh, there can be uh, some, some, some discussions about the fact to implement or not to implement national taxes, and there is obviously a discussion between the US and France. Uh, it's not because I'm French, because I'm EU commissioner, but I think, again, this makes no sense, because any tax uh, on the digital economy is not protectionist and it's not anti-American. I, I never speak personally about a GAFA tax. Because this that's what no they sense. argue. They always say this, this is, this is you certainly don't not, because not, you don't have a Facebook. Certain, you don't. This is not true because it's not an anti-GAFA tax. Uh, it, 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 what will be captured is the digital economy as a whole. It presents something like uh, 50 companies, I think, in the case of uh, uh, the uh, French tax, which, which are not uh, all of them. Uh, American, far from that. And you know that there are other countries, uh, Spain, Italy, uh, UK, which plan to have such taxes. And uh, the ministers uh, repeated yesterday, uh, the French minister, but also other ministers, that if such a tax exists, it's going to be temporary until the moment when we can find an international solution. And so I think that is cooled down the climate, but then we need to find an international solution so that there is no uh, national tax. Uh, that's why the EU proposed a EU solution. We couldn't get totally there, but we made progress. That's why we're working in the framework of OECD. That's why we're working here in the G7. I would say, I don't know if there will be a communique or a statement. That's the other big question. What if there isn't? Is that a failure? 
Uh, no, <laughs> there will be, but the problem is what is in it. I don't know, but I think at least we mm. must say that we've made here good progress. Okay. And I must say the discussion was positive. Uh, why? Because everybody agrees on the fact that we need to build uh, a, a corporate tax system for the 20th century that needs to catch uh, the digital economy and immaterial economy. And for that, there are two matters, two pillars. The first one is about um, a, a allocation of taxing rights, um, uh, about e identifying the digital presence, because today you know how to tax the physical presence. You don't know how to tax the digital presence. We have proposals in the EU with proposal directive that could be useful for that. The second uh, pillar is about uh, minimum taxation, but of course it is not that simple. Uh, we need first to define what mm -hmm. is the scope of such uh, taxation, then to go to a, a level of taxation. But well, basically, I would say, no, of course, we, we, we couldn't conclude on that here. It was not the purpose, but I think we can give clear guidance to the, D, to the OECD and we are uh, on time to, to, to meet the uh, uh, 2020 target. So, uh, of course, there are differences of approaches, uh, but uh, uh, everybody's trying at least uh, to, 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 to go in the same direction. I would say good progress. And speaking of Europe, I want to ask you about the uh, well, European Central Bank. The market is now basically pricing in that Mario Draghi will have to cut rates if not initiate QE again. Is that a concern to you, the fact that we're going negative, negative? You're seeing all this negative yield in debt in Europe. This is abnormal in many ways. But there is a, a tradition in Europe, I don't know if it's respected in the US, maybe it should be, is that the executive part, the executive branch, never comments uh, on what the uh, central bank is doing. We really have here an independent central bank. And we have got, uh, for the time being, uh, an ECB chair, Mario Draghi, who knows what it is about. And he has done what he had to do, uh, as well to save the euro, he did that in 2012, and also to, to, to help create the, the right macroeconomic framework. But what was said yesterday is that monetary policy is one thing, but we need also to reflect about fiscal policy. Right. Um, and, and it's high time that we build the, the, the right policy mix because what we see today is a slowdown in the economy everywhere um, and, and, and also the need to address the various risks that could uh, concretize together as well geopolitical risk, trade tensions, not between France and the US, that's nothing, but between uh, the US and China. And uh, now that you mentioned that, one of the things that the Americans do say is that the dollar is too strong. Do you worry that the administration is going to try to talk down the dollar and that's Again, a problem I, I, for the euro? I, I, I'm not commenting about uh, monetary policy because uh, the, the currency uh, is their own domain. But I think we need to, to, to be thinking about what happens if there is more than a slowdown. Mm. I'm not saying this is not this is going to happen. Our, our, our forecast, I would say, are moderately optimistic. We see a, a slowdown for this year with a modest recovery, but we also see that there is a accumulation of risk, and we need to have that in mind. And for example, we need to reform WT rule. I, 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 I think this is absolutely necessary. We need to reform also the IMF quotas. Mm. And finally, we, we need to have the design of fiscal policies which are coordinated, because some uh, of our economies have a, a large fiscal gap, and they need to use it to invest more and to create growth. Some others still have high level of deficit and debt, and they need to reduce that. And I'm sure that was a, probably a reference to Germany, probably a reference to Italy, but I want to ask you about the IMF. Should Europe put forward a name, a candidate? Because we're hearing so many names, Mark Carney, Dijsselbloem, Nadia Calvino, who is going to replace uh, Christine Lagarde? Well, I, I think there was a short discussion about that. Mm -hmm. um, everybody insists on the fact that the first criteria must be competence. Okay. And the competence means that you have diplomatic experience, that you are capable of handling such a diverse and a complex institution. But there is also a tradition in the Bretton Woods institutions is that the Americans, uh, our uh, US friends, chair the World Bank, and that uh, usually the Europeans chair uh, the IMF. Uh, I must say that uh, this tradition has been respected for Mr. David Malpass, who is here. So I take it that's to, a to, yes. To be, uh, and that's not a no. <laughs> Sorry, uh, okay. For the rest, we'll see who the person is because there is a procedure which is now ongoing since uh, uh, Christine Lagarde, who has done a terrific job, has resigned and it, we have until the 6th of September to nominate people. So let's not uh, discuss too early about names.